what we're going to look at in this section, we're going to talk about the electronic configuration of ions. All along, we were discussing the electronic configuration of atoms. But we're going to look at the electronic configuration of ions. And as we all know, ions, well, specifically monatomic ions, are formed as a result of atoms losing or gaining electrons. But before we get to that, we need to make a distinction between two types of electrons in the electron configuration of an atom. And those electrons are the valence electrons and the core electrons, right? So the valence electrons are those electrons that are occupying the outermost or the highest energy shell or the shell with the highest n value, right? So we call those electrons the valence electrons and the shell that they're located in, we call that the valence shell, right? Now, what you'll find is that for the main group elements, the number of electrons in the valence shell would be the same as the group number, right? So for example, elements in group 2A would have two valence electrons in the atomic structure. Elements in group 6A will have six valence electrons in the atomic structure and so on, right? What you'll find also is that as far as the period number is concerned, it is the same as the n value for the electrons in the valence shell. So for example, elements that are in period, let's say three, then basically the valence shell would be the third shell, all right? Okay, so the valence shell electrons, as we said before, are those electrons that are occupying the highest energy shell. All the other electrons that are present are located in what are called the core part of the electron configurations, and they are called the core electrons. So the electrons that are not in the valence shells, but they are in the inner shells, they are called the core electrons, right? So for example, if you look at the electronic configuration of arsenic, right? then one can easily identify the valence electrons, which would be the two electrons in the 4S sublevel here and the three electrons in the 4P sublevel because those sublevels are in the highest energy level, which is the fourth energy level, right? So therefore, arsenic has five valence electrons and therefore what you'll find is that arsenic is located in group 5A. Now, as far as the inner core electrons are concerned, those electrons would include the 10 electrons in the 3D sublevel and the 18 electrons, which would be part of the argon part of the core of the configuration of, ar of um, arsenic, right? So therefore, there is a total of 28 electrons that is present as core electrons in the electronic configuration of arsenic. So it's very important for what we're about to do next. It's very important that you make the distinction between the valence electrons and the core electrons, all right? So now we're going to get into the electron configurations of ion. Now, in order to get the electron configuration of ions, well, we have to look at, firstly, how we do so for the anions and then for the cations. So to obtain electron configurations of the anions, all we have to do is simply add the additional electrons to the valence shell of the neutral non-metallic atom. And usually, especially for the main group elements, this will complete the shell, all right? In other words, the shell will end up with um, a full complement of electrons. Um, so, and also, the particular monatomic ion usually will end up with a noble gas configuration, all right? So in the case of, let's say, oxide, where you add two electrons to the oxygen atom, the electron configuration would be the same as neon, all right? In the case of bromine, um, which has seven electrons on its outer shell, if you add one more electron, then that resulting electron configuration would be the same as that of krypton, all right? Okay, so when it comes to writing down the electron configuration of monatomic anions, that's a relatively simple process. Now, in the case of the formation of cations, it can become tricky. Firstly, whenever you have a cation being formed from an atom, that is, of course, as a result of the atom losing electrons, right? And this is usually um, what metals do, all right? So how do we determine the electron configuration? Well, of course, electrons are being removed from the configuration of the original atom. These electrons must be removed from the highest energy shell or the shell with the highest n value, all right? So basically, you look for the shell with the highest n value, and that's where you start removing electrons to form the electron configuration of cations. 
Now, if there are two subshells with the same highest principal quantum number, then what you do next is start removing electrons from the subshell with the higher L value. So for example, if you have a shell um, which has, let's say, S and P subshells, right? Electrons occupying those subshells. Then you'd start removing first electrons from the P sublevel, and then if you need to remove any more, then you start removing electrons from the S sublevel, all right? So we're gonna see that in these examples right here. Let's start off with um, strontium. This is the electronic configuration of strontium, the abbreviated version, right? So basically, to form the strontium two plus ion, we simply remove the two electrons from the 5S sublevel, which means that that 5S sublevel will disappear, and therefore the electron configuration will be the same as that of krypton. Now let's do the same thing in the case of titanium. This here is the electronic configuration of titanium, the abbreviated version. So where do we start removing electrons from? We start removing electrons from the fourth shell, which is the which contains the 4s sublevel. So to write down the electron configuration of Ti4+, we remove these two here, and then the next electrons we remove are these two here, and therefore the electron configuration will be the same as that of argon. Let's look at what happens in the case of iron. This is the abbreviated electron configuration of iron. So to write down the electron configuration of iron 2+, plus, we remove firstly these two electrons here from the fourth shell, which is um, where the 4s sublevel is located, and we simply write down what is left, which would be the electronic configuration of um, argon and then 3d6, all right? So basically, we remove electrons from the highest energy um, level or the valence shell, all right? So here are some questions here. What would be the electronic configuration of Fe3+. Plus? Well, in the case of Fe3+, plus, all we have to do is remove an electron from the 3D sublevel here. So therefore, for Fe3+, plus, let me write it here, for Fe3+, plus, the electron configuration would be Ar and then 3D5. All right? Now, in the case of Tin2+, plus, first we have to determine what the electron configuration of Tin2+, plus is. Um, so in the case of tin, let me see here, the atomic number of tin is um, hold on. Okay, so the atomic number of tin is 50. Um, so the electron configuration of tin, so we have to work this out actually, right? So for tin, the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, um, 4s2, and then, hold on one minute here. One minute here. Okay, so after 4s2, then we have 3D10, all right? And then after 3D10, we have 4P6. So, so far we have 20 plus 10, 36 electrons. So we have 14 more electrons to assign. So after 4P6, we have 5S2. And then after 5S2, we have 4D, let me see here, 4D. Okay, let me, so that's, um, so that's 36, 38, 40, 10, that's um, 48. And then after 40, 10, we have 5P2, all right? So this would be the full electronic configuration of tin. So the group eight element that precedes tin will be, let me consult the periodic table here, krypton, right? And it turns out that the electron configuration of krypton will be, okay, it should be 4D10 here, all right? So the electron configuration of krypton will be um, all of this up to here. So up to here, 
will be the electronic configuration of Krypton. So therefore, the abbreviated version, let me write down the abbreviated version here. The abbreviated version for the electron configuration of tin would be Krypton. And then we have 5s2, 4d10, 5p2, all right? Okay, so to answer the question, what's the electronic configuration of tin two plus? Basically, we have to remove electrons from the valence shell, which would be um, these two here, which would also be in the highest sublevel in that valence shell. So therefore, for tin two plus, let me write this down here, the electron configuration would be KR 5S2 4D10. And that would be the electron configuration of SN2 plus. All right? Okay. So that's basically how that is done. So let's look at this example here. Question says, write the full electronic configuration of cobalt 3 plus. So of course we need to determine the um, atomic number of cobalt. So let me look that up here. So the atomic number of cobalt is 27, all right? So for cobalt, the atomic number is 27. So the electron configuration using SPDF notation for cobalt is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and then we have 4s2, and then, um, so that's um, 20, and then 3d7, all right? So that's the full electron configuration of cobalt. Um, so the abbreviated version would be, well, um, the electron configuration of argon would be this part right here. So this is argon. So therefore the abbreviated version would be this, 4s2, 3d7, right? So this is for cobalt. So to get from cobalt to cobalt three plus, we have to remove three electrons, minus three electrons, <laughs> So that means that the first two will be from the valence shell, right? And then the third electron will be from the 3D sublevel. So therefore, the electron configuration of cobalt 3 plus would be three would be would be the electron configuration of argon and then 3D6. And that would be the answer to this question. All right? Okay, so that's basically how that is done. All right. So the next topic we're going to talk about in the next video will deal with the magnetic properties displayed by atoms based on their electron configuration. All right. Until next time.